Hi, I'm Stephen Cronin and today I'm going to show you how to paint this simple little forest scene. I'll show you how to really try and help get, get some real contrast with your lights and your darks. How to put your trees on in layers to help really create a sense of depth in your painting. And then how to create that sense of light by casting some really strong shadows. But before I show you how I painted this, let's have a quick look at the materials. So first the palace, and we've got ultramarine, cadmium yellow, Payne's grey, alizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. And then the only two brushes I used were the large Ron Ranson hake and the little number three Riga brush. So I'm going to keep this one off with the big brush, and this is just clear water just to lubricate the paper and stop all those hard edges in the background just softened everything up nicely then I'm going to go a bit of raw sienna a bit of cadmium yellow and I'm just going to put that in going at the top i try and get some quite random effects as I work my way down there we go a little bit of a bit of blue there into the mix, a bit more yellow, just dipping the tip of the brush into the water just to loosen everything off, everything went a little bit dry then, I want to see just dripping very slightly down the page, a bit more raw sienna, a bit more water, A touch of ultramarine in there with it just to keep the variation. And then what I'll do once I've got down to the bottom, and we'll go back up to the top then and then vary it even more. So again, cadmium yellow, bit of ultramarine, get that nice and dark there. Bit of light red as well, cadmium yellow, bit of Cad, ultramarine. I'm just going to try and get a sort of light coming through this scene. So, being careful to just preserve the, the sort of more, the lighter areas and then work out where the dark sections are going to go. Really help enhance the, the, the light through the uh, through the scene so once I'm fairly happy with the sort of background colours that I've got in I'll start doing those distant trees just, just well, no that's too strong I'll do I'll do them afterwards I want a few little red bits in the, in the trees, like dead leaves and all that sort of stuff. So I'll, I'll do that in a bit. For now, I'm just going to soak up that water at the bottom of the paper and I'm going to switch to the little little rigger brush. And I'm just going to take a bit of, plenty of water, a bit of, bit of blue, a bit of yellow, mix those together. And I've got a few, few trees through there. And because this paper is still wet, these will soften right off into the background. And so by the time you put the foreground stuff in, it'll, it'll, these will look really far away. A bit more water, a bit more cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue. Continue on this right hand side. And then when I've got those in, more than a bit. So you can see how the paper stretched a little bit. Soak that water up at the bottom where it's gathering. Let's just pull this paper tight against this piece of plywood. 9mm piece of plywood just sat upright on the easel. And the only reason it's this upright is just because it suits the camera angle. And I got that used to doing it now, it's just the white paint normally. So let's take a bit more 
Oh yeah, that's a bit more blue. We've got a nice, nice sort of chisel edge on the height brush now, all the hairs are together. I'm going to put in a few more, a few more trees. Now these ones a little bit stronger. You can see already these ones are pushing those initial trees right right back. Let's get that a bit, a bit straighter. But because the paper's still wet, these are still going to seem quite soft, especially compared to the, the foreground ones that we'll put in afterwards. So a few more up here. Another one there. Another one there. Now I'll put a few on the other side I think. Something about like that I think. Another one up there. Too close, close together there. Bring that down slightly. So that's the sort of second layer put in. What I might also do with that second layer as well. Just get the same colour again on the little rigger brush. A few little twigs and, and branches and things growing. Few on the left, few on the right, these are growing all over the place, few up, few down. So once those are in, what I'm going to do then, is squeeze the water out, and let's put a little bit of a little bit of distant foliage in. So I'm just going to scuff the hairs up so they're going all over the place just like that. I'm just going to dab in. I don't want any water, I want this, I want this really dry now because the paper's still wet. So I'm just going to... Actually, just fairly, fairly lightly. A few leaves here and there. Very dry brush. Going into a bit of that red as well. A little bit of red there, a little bit of autumn colour. So it's cadmium yellow, a bit of light red, a sort of goldy reddy colour. And just a few leaves on these trees. Bring that all the way down there, a bit more red. Also a bit around the floor as well. Just working out how this land lies now. So the horizon is coming down somewhere down there I think. So I think now I'm ready for now for some, some trees a little bit closer to us. These will be like the third layer of trees. But these will be the thickest, strongest paint mix. So I'm not going to bother cleaning the brush because I'm going for a quite a dark mix. All I'm going to do, see how they're still all frayed all over the place. I'll just dip the very tip seems to the water just to bring all the airs back together. I'm just going to go a little bit of yellow, yeah, a bit of, fact, this is too wet. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take off all that liquid up with the t-shirt. Let's get it just a little bit drier, a little bit drier. So I'm going to go a little bit of brown. A little bit of blue, a bit of yellow as well maybe, a bit more brown. I want these really, really dark now because these are going to contrast against that light. You know, for maximum contrast, so brown, blue, very dark colour. And 
so let's start with one somewhere about there bring that down a little bit more again just reload the brush and have another one up there given that way another one up there and like a big one up there bring it down a little bit lower one up there you know that you can see these straight away you put these and you've got your three layers now you've got your foreground ones then your middle distant ones there and then the ones we put in right at the start with the rigger brush the furthest ones away when the paper was at its wettest so they've all softened up so let's just have another one there another one behind there taking care not to paint over the, 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 the things that are like in the distance switch to the actually I don't think we need twigs and branches on in this close I'm not going to put those on just leave them as the trunks I think but I am going to put on a good bit of foliage so again I'm going to dry the brush just squeeze that water out straight into the water jar below. Scuff it up on the tea towel. I just want to make sure this is, I just want to get this a little bit drier. go a bit of cadmium yellow let's start with that one what's that look like pop that in straight over there like that more down there then I'm going to add a bit of this red to the yellow Let's add a bit of ultramarine. So we're going sort of back down to a, to a greeny colour now, ultramarine, cadmium yellow. Maybe even a little bit of Payne's grey, it's really, really dark green colour. Top, I think. All that red. There's a little bit of a few bushes down there. Quite a bit, quite a dry brush this is now. So I don't want to block in everything that I've done. It's going a little bit muddy, so I'm just going to clean that. I'm going to try and get back to a sort of light, light yellow, cadmium yellow colour. So again, I'll just squeeze the water out, scuff it up on the tea towel. So it's dry, clean brush, hairs frayed all over the place. And then I'm getting back into that cadmium yellow. I think this is where it would come in handy if I was using it neat out of the tube and I could get real great big dollops of it. Definitely come in handy then. You can get it sort of, it's the only time you can sort of get light on top of dark when you're using it really, really thick like that. 
Let's have a little bit of yarn. Let's see if I can get, get to just just for a bit of something that's down here in the foreground. It's quite dark amongst these shadows. Uh, oh, look at these uh, sort of shadowy colours in. Not quite as wet as that. I mean, a bit of brown, a bit of red, a bit of blue. Brown, blue, red. It's like a nice shadowy colour. Maybe there's such a green in there as well. And I want, I want it to lean in towards blue. But I think something like that, I think. Will do. Now then, I'm going to start from here. I'm just going to define this bit of path. Uh, that is quite dark, eh? That is very dark. Just a bit Right across the land like this. Let's just darken those a little bit. And we got the shadow coming off that one. This is in shadow around here. A few more shadows around here, I think. There's plenty of darks up here in the trees. I'm trying to get a little bit more. More green. And now I'm just going to clean the brush. Let's just take the excess off on the on the towel. So just go into this yellow. I just want to just brighten it up a little bit here and there. A few more little brighter colours. That's that would need it straight out of the tube to, to work there. Get a bit of green on there. green bits in between these shadows. See if I can just widen it up a little bit. It's just everything's just got went a little bit and a little bit dull. Does that look any better? And then it's that yellow, it's a little bit of ultramarine. A little bit too wet, just want it a little bit drier than that. Some marine, a little bit of cadmium yellow, just a little, a little bit of Payne's grey, I think, just to darken it. I think I'll need just a, these are just, just little bits of grass here and there, just adding a bit, little bit of texture in this ground. I think it's just a little bit flat. I think what we definitely need is a need a uh, focal point, don't we? So I keep looking at that. I think what we definitely need is 
And they, those shadows, that, that's, that's stopping short of where they should be. I'm thinking... Let me just get them on a little bit stronger. They should be right across there, yeah, right across. Just strengthen these a little bit. Get that focal point in. We need a man. We need a man. Somewhere up there. I'm just going to pop his head in. And I'm going to start with his shoulders. And then come down with his legs. And pop his head on there. And just look in this way. Right next to him is his little dog. That dog actually looks more like a ghost. I'm going to say that. There we go. I think I think the only other thing we need is a little bird. And I think I'm gonna leave it that before I before I get too mad and ruin it. So the only thing I have to do is stick my name down in this corner. And let's just strengthen that a little bit. Right, let's see what it looks like with the man on. So this is our little forest scene, all mounted up. So let's go and have a closer look at it. So looking at all these trees, there's basically there's three layers. We've got the most distant ones, like here, put in with the little rigger brush while the paper was at its wettest. Then I'll switch to the height brush and put these ones in, such as the, that one there. A little bit thicker, a little bit stronger mix. That one then helps push these back into the distance. But then these foreground ones then push the other two layers well back. Strongest mix, really, really dark, helping contrast against the light. So once the trees were in place, I had to get these shadows in. I had to put them in a couple of times, really, because they just weren't dark enough the first time, a bit, bit weak. Then we've also got all these bushes and foliage on the sort of ground level, casting shadows left, right and centre. Bit of dry brushwork from the trees, although I could have done with some some lighter colours I think. Um, I hinted at it in the in the commentary, well, I, sh I should have just squeezed some yellow out and just used it neat, just dabbed it because it would have gone straight over the dark areas then. I mean, we've got a little focal point, little man, man and his dog walking off out of the shadows and into the light. Well that's it for uh, today's painting, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope you just painted along with me. Um, any questions, please ask. Keep practicing and I'll see you again soon.